welcome to my vacation vlog from Orlando, Florida. Uh, arrived yesterday, quite a nice flight. Got lost coming here. How many times have I been here and I got lost? Uh, cut up somebody on the way here trying to find the hotel. He wasn't too happy. Um, but we're staying at the Enclave Suites on uh, International Drive, or just off International Drive. Um, very nice. She stayed at the uh, SeaWorld Hilton uh, down the road. Um, it's interesting, I've been to Orlando what, five times now, but I don't go anywhere near the theme parks. Uh, people find it a bit strange, but no, really, Orlando's a great place if you like Florida to uh, use as a base and stretch out. So uh, I've noticed when I do videos in the past, I just sort of show montages. Uh, but I thought, all right, a lot of people do video vlogs. And I thought, well, why don't I do a video vlog and really bore you all? Um, so uh, join me as uh, we have nine lovely days in the sunny state of Florida. This is the Enclave Suite on Carrier Drive. So that's our nice car outside our nice building. This is quite nice, a gazebo. Sorry about the guy doing the garden in the background. A gazebo that overlooks uh, Wet and Wild. Obviously there's alligators and uh, snakes in the area, so don't want to screw with them. Yeah, it's really nice. There's a nice little lake. And there's uh, Wet and Wild uh, in the distance. Very cool. Okay, this is the rather nice apartment, the studio apartment in uh, the Enclave Suites. So we'll give a little, little tour in case you ever come to stay here. Okay, you come into the lovely little lounge. Good chairs for eating, nice little sofa, in mirror, uh, staring you in the face. And you've got two bedrooms, master bedroom, actually it's the same size as the other bedroom really. Um, yep, toiletries, all good. Yes, the telly looks like it was made in 1985. The reception's pretty crap. It's not even worth watching anything, to be honest with you. But hey, every cloud. Same as this one here, actually. But, uh, yeah. Okay, where's the flat screen? What's, why isn't flat screen going on? Uh, this is the kids' bedroom. It's quite nice. Um, and they've even painted SeaWorld on the wall. And yes, we still have another 1985 TV. It's also got its own little bathroom. Okay, yeah. Lovely, more SeaWorld stuff on the wall. And an excellent little kitchenette. Absolutely excellent. Freezer, fridge, stocked up. Really good. Stove, kettle, coffee making machine, microwave, even a bloody dishwasher, man. So yes, all in all, uh, it's actually, or microwave of course, can't survive without a microwave. All in all, it's actually a very, very nice little apartment. Yes, it could do with a little bit of upgrading in places, um, but uh, I rather like it. Actually, it's probably one of the nicer suites I've stayed in over the years, so yeah. Okay, we are at the Tibet Butler Preserve. I'm going to do one of these walks. Um, no one seems to be around, it's very quiet. But uh, let's see where we can head to. And off we go. This is the Pine Walk, which is only like 0.8 miles, which is nothing for me, I have to admit. But uh, I might take the other route afterwards. It's nice to be actually out in some nature for a change, as opposed to the uh, concrete jungle of International Drive. A pretty good ecosystem. What's interesting is they just say there's a lot of flooding. This is actually a pathway. Uh, up to the steps, and that's actually about four inches deep, which is a bit mental. What's interesting when you do these hikes is um, in the UK, obviously, we're a bit spoilt for walking trails. Uh, but these great ones off the beaten track in Orlando are really, really nice. Um, 
real sort of ecosystem. So yeah, it's really cool. Okay, slight problem. I didn't bring my hiking shoes with me because they wouldn't fit in the bag, and I knew I was going to come walking. So um, one might get just a bit damp, but uh, we will persevere. I've walked in rain before and I know the tricks. The trick is wet feet. And look what we have here. Hello mate. Hello, it's all right. He's a bit so shy. How are you? You all right? And here we are. This is rather nice. There would be alligators in these waters. Okay, we're now on something called the Tar Flower Loop, which is a loop system. They keep on opening these new trails here on this reserve. Um, all the time. Oh, it's just so nice to be out in uh, nature. We are now on Fallen Log Crossing. It's supposed to be quite wet, so we'll see how far we can get. I actually wasn't going back to the um, <coughs> visitor centre, but I thought I'd do this little trail, it's only a mile. So it's probably got about three and a half miles in today. Although I've forgotten my uh, Fitbit, because I'm dark. St. Augustine. Ride uh, for an hour and a 20 minutes drive around St. Augustine. Thank you. 
So we're on the top of the battlements at um, the Castillo San Marcos fort. It used to be owned by the British a couple of years. Really, really nice, very hot obviously. Got it upstairs. But uh, yeah, a little wander around, show you some some of the sights here. It's very hot. Really cool places. Nice to come to no disrespect to uh, American friends, but it's nice to come somewhere which does have a real bit of history to it. It's really cool. All right, history made primarily by the Spanish and the British. Um, we should have kept hold of this colony. It's rather nice. This schoolhouse, which I was in before. So we are at the old schoolhouse, which I've been to before. Um, nice little garden here. This is one of the the oldest schoolhouse in the United States. Nice little privy garden. And here it is. Into the schoolhouse we go. Creepy mannequins that uh, were here last time. Very cool place. Very cool place. But I say the mannequins are a bit creepy. Just our clothing is of that period. We was dressed this way in 1931 by graduates of the class of 1864 during the class reunion. That's right, Johnny. Uh, they also decorated this little school the way they remembered it when they were here. As a matter of fact, on the back wall, there are some photographs of the class taken at that reunion and the class roll. The school itself was built sometime before 1763. Thank you for coming to visit. Don't forget your diploma and enjoy your stay in the nation's oldest city. Bye. Well, that was like an episode of Thunderbirds, honestly. Yeah. Okay. There we go. There's the kitchen. With the creepy mannequins again. Oh, I like this. This is the well, it's actually a privy, but it's actually called the meditation room. But it's a privy, so uh, go figure. Pretty cool, anyway. Mm -hmm. So, the very nice St. Augustine, very nice. Lots of old buildings, very cool. Just going off the beaten track a little bit, and I'm trying to find the oldest house, which we passed earlier on on the uh, trolley ride. I think it's just down here, so we'll go and have a look. Okay, this is the old town. Lovely old shop here, look at that. Father Miguel O'Reilly House Museum. Circa 1691. Mm. Okay. Just met a cool guy called Michael Zimmerman, and we talked about pretty much life, the universe and everything. He's sort of stuck down here in St. Augustine trying to get home to Tennessee. Really nice guy. Wish I could help him out, but uh, I'm on a budget myself, so uh, yeah, interesting. Meet cool people.
than it's meant to be. Okay, we're walking down the main high road back towards the trolley stop. Might be a look at the uh, fountain of youth. Yeah, you know me. About as religious as a brick wall. I'm going to head towards the big cross that they uh, erected. It's quite an interesting viewpoint. Basically, it's a big cross for Mr. Jesus. It's actually quite impressive, actually. Yeah. Not bad at all. So there you have it. The first European landing in America. Way ahead by about 50 years of the Pilgrim Fathers. Fascinating. So apparently this is uh, known as America's most sacred acre. Uh, tradition has it that the first mass in the new colony was celebrated here. Okay. This present chapel is the fourth building on this site. It's rather nice. And we're back to the start. Just by the uh, Fountain of Youth, famous Fountain of Youth. It's got a rather groovy little water wheel. Well, that's pretty much it for St. Augustine. Very cool trip. Fighting for the uh, coach to go back and have a little wander around the museum. Yeah, it's been good. Hi, kids. Okay, today's fun journey. I'm at uh, Wakiva Springs, one of the natural springs in Florida, just north of Orlando. It's a nice little hiking trail around here, which I'm going to do. There's one for 13 miles up. I don't think I'm going to do that, not with um, out my walking boots. So, uh, yeah, here we go. There's Wakiva Springs, natural spring. Okay, it's rather wonderful here. It's usually very busy, but it's obviously chilled out because it's midweek and a lot of people have probably gone back to work and kids have gone to school. Um, so I'm going to do a little trail. Um, it's not very long. I haven't got walking boots, as I said, I'm not doing the 13 mile walk and uh, see where we get to. Oh, it's a nice graffitied chair to have a seat. Have a little gradient. I'm going to head down to Sand Lake, which is 1.9 miles. Hopefully, I won't encounter any bears. If I do, I just look scary. Not too hard to do. Always remember when we were on summer camp. If you've got any thunder or lightning, just get undercover straight away. Get out of the open and undercover. Not heard any yet, and it's unlikely. And I've said before, being out in nature, superb. As you walk along, you do hear these little rustlings in the bush. And it always makes you go, whoa, what's that? Even if you're an experienced person out in the countryside, it still sort of freaks you out a bit when you're walking. Oh, Creek Loop and Sand Lake Parking. Uh, okay, where is Sand Lake then? It doesn't actually say where it is. What fun. I think it's down here actually. And we found it. There's the lake. As you circle the lake, there's a little 
viewpoints. It's a great place for a picnic. I haven't got a picnic with me. Yeah. I've actually got my Fitbit on this time, and uh, according to that, I've already done um, nearly 12,000 steps, which is what, 5.6, nearly 6 miles? Didn't seem like it, so that's good to know. Once again, always be careful of these little tykes. Show respect. Well, thank you, Sand Lake. And thank you, Wakiva Springs. Really enjoyed it here. I will return at some point. One last thing from here. I'm not sure if it's pronounced Wakiva or Wakiva Springs. No. I say tomato, you say tomato, whatever. So I'm sure someone will correct me. I'm saying Wakiva Springs. Okay, been an interesting couple of days. Been to St. Augustine, um, went to Wakiva Springs yesterday, and today I'm being a bit of a tourist. I'm going to go up to the Orlando Eye, and as it was a double attraction offer, I'm going to the Sea Life Centre as well. And tomorrow is Kennedy Space Centre. Okay, so here we are at the Orlando Eye. Let's go and uh, see what's at the top. Rosanin Hotel. I'm just waiting for the pickup to go to Kennedy Space Center. Okay, here we are at Kennedy Space Center. About to go in. Let's do some science, bitches. I've seen pictures of this place when it opened in August of 1967. Back then, the entrance was around the corner where you're going to see the big NASA logo. Standing there back then were a couple of these rockets. Over the years, we added to the collection and we moved them over here to create the rocket garden. It's been remodeled a couple of times over the decades. Right now, we're moving our astronaut hall of fame from across the river over here for a new attraction called Heroes and Legends, which is scheduled to open sometime in November. Behind me is where the NASA bus tour leads from. Uh, every 15 minutes, buses depart from there. All right, one of the first things we learned in Florida is don't stand around outside unless you have to. So we'll head on over this way underneath the uh, replica of the fuel tanks here. Here, as you can see, are 
the silica foam tiles that you saw in the video, and these are all numbered. You can see that. This is really like a very custom-made suit on this particular spacecraft, because uh, as you can see, especially when you look underneath it, there are not a lot of flat surfaces, right? Everything's sort of got a little bit of a curve or something in it. Second time I've seen the um, Atlantis, Atlantis reveal, uh, and it still takes your breath away. If you're not into science, it's still amazing. Okay, piloting the shuttle. It's not really, of course, it's a simulation, but it's pretty cool. Okay, we're now going to head out uh, to the Saturn V area with a 45 minute um, coach ride. The 50 shuttle bay, fantastic. And then 525 feet or 160 meters high. Look to the far right. See the three towers on one side, two on the other. That is launching pad 40, where over a couple of weeks ago, the SpaceX rocket exploded from that launching pad. Here last year, last May, when we were doing the uh, trip from New York down to Miami, we, we stopped by here on the way down to Miami. We were so lucky we got a rocket launch here, uh, which you need to see my video, USA Southern Explorer. But uh, the distance there's the vehicle assembly building. We've run there's a new rocket pad. Rocket pad. Launch pad 39A. Nice little breeze here today. Actually, it's not actually too hot. I mean, it's hot. Of course, it's hot. It's Florida. But it's actually not as hot as it usually is. is 3.7 billion years old and older than pretty much 98% of all the rocks on Earth. How many days does it take to get to the moon? Three days. Conversely, how many days does it take to get back? Three days. That's a total round trip of how many days? Six days. Can you imagine that? I'm heading back to the visitor complex. I'm going to see one of the IMAX films again. I never saw them last year. So. Hey, uh, this way. I also think it's pretty exciting. So let me show you some of the things that NASA has been working on over the past few years to help get us into space safely. So we'll upload a couple of slides so you've got something interesting to look at while I tell you about the things that have been going on at the Kennedy Space Center since we retired the space shuttle program in 2011. to the future. 
just going up to the Memorial uh, Park, which I think is very important when you're trying to do endeavours and push the human spirit further on. You take sacrifices by brave people, trying to make that dream come reality. I'm going to read this plaque actually. When mankind has sought to conquer new frontiers, there have been those who have given their lives for the cause. This astronaut's memorial, dedicated May the 9th, 1991, is a tribute to American men and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice, believing the conquest of space is worth the risk of life. As everyone knows, I'm really interested in the um, concept of space exploration. I've just realised this is the fourth year I've come to Kennedy Space Centre in a row. Not intentionally or anything. A bit. Um, yeah. It's interesting, but it's always something new to see. Okay. So, no. Sit in a shuttle. So I hope you've enjoyed a little tour of Kennedy Space Centre. Um, I've loved it, always do. Tomorrow we're going to go and see some alligators. So here we are at Wild Florida for a, a boat trip and uh, some alligator stuff. It's actually quite exciting. Okay, we're going up to the animal park. The last um, animal park I went to was in uh, Thailand with all the elephants. This one's uh, more gator friendly. Yeah. What are you doing? Is that how you climb? Oh, that's how you climb. Very clever. Very clever. Swamp area. Do a nice little. Uh, Walk around here. I've got a busload of smokers as well. First time ever I've been out on a trip, there's everyone smoking. That was a little bit hard. Usually on a trip, it's usually up one person, if that. That was good, it was a good test for me. I even got off of one, but I said no. Okay, we're in the alligator park. I'm looking for alligators. I've seen a couple already, there's probably loads here, there's one there. Hello. Hello. This really is a great park. Off the beaten track, and here's a lovely deer. Look. Hello. Hello. How are you? All right. There you go. You're very welcome. No one turned up. Yeah. Oh. That was cool, feeding a, a deer. Back home, I said to the, uh, one of the rangers here, you know, when you're out walking, you might occasionally see them, especially around the sort of North Downs. They run so quickly, you don't really have a chance to see them. They're quite timid creatures. Let's go see a zebra. I could be sleeping, but I love it all curled up together.
end of Dead River. In 1913, two local cowboys rode their horses into Dead River in search of lost cracker cows. They were never seen again. Later, their hats and horse bridles were found. It is believed a 20-foot monster gator attacked and killed them. I'm sure you understand why his mouth is taped shut. Or he doesn't bite. An alligator this size, Fluffy, has enough power to bite to crush bones in my hand and even take off some of my fingers. This guy. I've got uh, Steve and Lisa in front of me, yeah, who've just got married. This is their honeymoon. mother here on my last ride. She was right there on the other side, but as soon as we pulled up, she went under. You could see the bubbles going over here somewhere. She's hiding in the grass. and turns. So I recommend coming down here, um, get you out of uh, Orlando for a, half a day, onwards and upwards. So it's been fun, um, heading to the airport in a couple of hours and flying back to a rather hot and sunny England in September apparently, <laughs> lovely. Um, it's been fun, it's done lots of good stuff and I think I'll just show you the final view from the hotel window. Cheers. Shall we say goodbye to Florida? <laughs> <laughs>